Welcome back to Boomer's Playground, and today we'll be going over coding exercise 37 from the Web Developer Bootcamp by Colt Steel. So now we're starting to get into um, some of the more, uh, I don't want to say complicated, but we started to get into the more of the like programming concepts that tend to, um, this is kind of the area where people start to doubt themselves, or maybe they think it isn't right for them. And I'm just going to encourage you guys to just keep pressing forward. Um, I would get through the whole front end of this course and try and build a couple things before I would consider this not being for me. Um, I always mentioned that programming isn't for everybody, but that's not me saying don't try. If you're interested, anybody can do it. And you should give yourself at least six months to realize if it's really for you or not. Not that you'll get a job in that time frame, but you'll at least know then you'll be like, okay, I can handle the struggles of finding these solutions. I can handle, you know, taking an hour to realize I had a typo, that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, like I said, stick with it. Again, it's okay to say, hey, I'm just not meant to be a programmer. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are interested, at least make sure you put enough work in to truly know. Don't just use that as an easy cop out. So now we're getting into the fun part. So we have multiple arguments. And again, like the previous video, I like their parameters, but that's that's neither here nor there. Um, so in some days, in some dice games like craps, you roll two dice. Well, you always roll two dice in craps. But if you get if both dice, if both die are a one, it's considered snake eyes because unless you bet that, which most people don't because it can only happen one way, um, you win a lot, but it's not it's not a very common thing. So Snake Eyes is usually considered to be a bad thing. So um, so let's just follow through. And again, I'm going to do the pseudocode. So sorry that bores you guys, but this really helps me as I'm going through this. So um, create a function named called whatever it is Snake Eyes. Um, accepts two parameters and if you ever see like accepts or takes or you'll be given that means it's a it's a parameter pretty much um and then we just need to check um if both params are one print snake eyes and that'll be step three and step four is if not print that snake eyes and some of you might be thinking like oh dude why didn't you just put them all on that or you know these two on on the one line and i really can't stress enough how helpful this is when you get into more complex things um you really just want to make it one manageable byte that you can tackle at a time. So um, hint, normally a function will return a value, but for the sake of having this work with the Udemy interpreter, we'll be using console logs instead of return. And you'll go over return in the next video. So don't don't worry too much about that. But this we have is make eyes. So there's our function. And we're gonna do, um, we can really name these whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as we match them up to what we're checking in in the middle here. Cause this is, you can think of this as just like a placeholder or a variable. We're just saying, hey, I'm gonna give you two things and you will, you will know because it will be given to you. They'll say, hey, we're gonna give you two numbers, check and see if they're the same. So you'll know that these are going to be numbers. So you can really name them whatever you want. But I'm going to start with this just to show that we can kind of do whatever. So um, we want to check if both are one. So I see this a lot. Uh, what is it? If arg1 equals one. Oh, if arg. Oh, man, I should, I should have found one. Um, but a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see if arg and arg2 equals one, we want to console.log 
snake eyes, and if it's not, then we want to console.log not snake eyes. And um, let's see what we get here. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, so two and one, it should have returned not snake eyes, but it didn't. We actually sent snake eyes. So, okay. Huh, I'm not sure. And so there's a couple things we could do here. So th this is a pretty common answer. Um, it's not the right one. So we could either, you know, come in here and be like, all right, let's check this bad boy out. Let's see what it does. Um, we got that. And then we can do is snake eyes. And it says we gave it snake eyes, but we wanted that. And it gave us a two and a one. And so two and one. And this is how you, well, you guys saw that from the last, the RAM one. You just pass in the numbers. Okay, so this should definitely not be snake eyes. And so we could do a little Google searching. I don't know if you guys remember from the previous, one of the previous lectures, the and operator, or not operator, but um, the logical. Yeah, where is it at? First object, object. I don't think it's that one. Decision making. Yeah, I, I don't know where it is now, but so, um, but let's say you remembered it, you just can't find it. So we want to do the logical and operator JS. And so you'll see here and pause the video. I see it and I know right away because I've been doing this for a while, but, um, you know, if you guys don't see it right away, it's right here. And you'll notice, hmm. so we're checking this and this, because remember with the, the double and sign, both things have to be true. So essentially what we're saying here is, all right, if arg1 is true, which just means is that a truthy value, which if it's a number besides zero, it is, and does arg2 equal one, which in this instance, it happens to be. So this is kind of a really weird edge case that we just happen to write the code so that one of the tests passes when it shouldn't. So um, let's say, let, what if we would have done, let's do is snake eyes and we'll do one and two. Now we get not snake eyes, but we get it for the wrong reason. So you're like, well, they're not snake eyes and, and you are correct. But the only reason that this is, is giving us the, the correct response is, again, we're saying, is arg1 a truthy value? And because it's a number that's not zero, it is. Even negative numbers are, are truthy. It's just zero that's not. And does arg2 equal one? So what we really need to do is we need to make sure that they're both one. Not that one is a truthy value. We really just want them to both be one. So when you're checking stuff like this, you need to do the entire check on one side, you do the double ampersand, and then you do the entire check on the other side. And so this one gets a lot of people and that's fine, um, but that's, you just have to do the complete, like, you know, is this true? And is this true? Whereas before, when we just had this, we're not comparing arc one against anything, we're just saying, hey, is this a truthy value? And so that's why, um, you know, that first one, it didn't work, but the second one that we just showed, we did get what we want, but we got it wrong. We didn't get it for the right reasons. So, and this is a great example of why testing is so important because, you know, if we would have, if we would have done this one first and passed in one and two, we'd be like, oh, cool. Works as expected when in actuality it's not. So, um, let's see if this passes. I'm not sure if it's going to or not. And awesome, so that did pass. And I do wanna show, um, so again, this arg1 and arg2, the, the names inside of here can be named almost whatever you want. There are some reserved 
JavaScript keywords. But as long as the names you use here match up inside of your function, they can be whatever. So like we'll do Udemy, we'll do Colt Steel. And so as long as we match them up, it doesn't matter what they're called. And so you'll see that still passes. And then also we can do it with the new ES6 um, you know, arrow function syntax. I do not know why. All right, well, apparently I'm a little outside of my wit or my height that I can be at, but that's fine. Just got snake eyes. And then again, we'll just do all right, we're gonna have to probably get rid of those guys. And so here we'll do die one and die two. And then here we'll just check if die one equals one and die two equals one. We want to console.log snake eyes else all right and this should still pass so let's make sure that it does okay cool and so you'll see that it does pass and i do just want to show something here so um i'm gonna do let's just do a new we'll do test function do die one. Oh, let, let's we'll do Demi and we'll do Colt Steel. So now again, remember this Udemy and Colt Steel are literally just variables. They're just placeholders. So now we'll do Demi and then we'll say whatever that value is. And then we can do the same thing. We can do Colt and we'll do whatever that is. So dumb function, not doing much, but it's just to prove the point. Immerse playground and you know, 1,000, and if I, I'm going to refresh, sorry guys, I misspelled per usual, yeah, so we'll see right here, I have a little fat finger issue there, console.log, so then now we can do, where's playground, we do a, a million thousand, and you'll see we get the Udemy parameter actually is whatever I passed in first, and the Colt Steel parameter or variable is whatever I passed in second. And that's always going to be the case. And that's another thing why the order is so important. So, you know, um, you know Green Bay Packers. And what do we want over here? Um, we'll just do like 10. And so now, the Udemy parameter is 10 because I passed 10 in first, and then the Colt Steel parameter is Green Bay Packers because I passed that in second. So I just want to do a, a super quick deep dive on how that works because once you start getting into more parameters or arguments, it does start to get a little more complicated, and I did just want to spend a little extra time with that. So I hope you guys learned something today. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in Coding Exercise 38.